sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path, give all for whom the faith they profess are accounted as Christians, the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation 
the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected to it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be like to a man who sowed good seeds in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all throughout the weeds and then went off. When the crops grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the household came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? Where? Have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? And he replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the weed along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the weed into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord.
Thus says the Lord, justice from the heavens, the rain and the snow come down and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful. Do you think the Lord's trying to make a point to us today? That rain is really pouring down. And I begin with a, a word of explanation and uh, uh, apologies to you here present and those of you watching us on net. So um, probably because of the rain, we did have a little bit of excitement with the fire alarm going off about 10.30 this morning. Fire department came in, checked everything out and um, disabled, well, reset the alarm, but we still have that blinking light. Um, but we did get the all clear to come back in for mass. And how grateful am I to our fire department here in the city of New York for their courageous and generous response in any time of need. Um, we're very, very grateful. Um, but of course, you know, please excuse the blinking lights. Of course, we still pay attention and evacuate, leave orderly if an alarm goes off. We never disregard that. Um, secondly, to those, there were some flooding issues downstairs and that may or may not have been part of it and that affected some of the work with Net TV. so I think there was some delay in transmission. So to one and all, thanks for your patience, thanks for putting up with us and we thank God even for that gift of rain which brings us life, achieves its purpose and draws our attention to God's word. Second thing, I'd like, on a happier note, I'd like to say a word of, a warm word of welcome to Father Davis, who is concelebrating with me today. Father Davis is the new provincial for the CMI Fathers. The um, priest, who, a number of priests from the congregation serve us right here in Brooklyn and in Queens. It's, certainly, they care for the parish of um, St. Anthony, St. Alphonsus in Greenpoint, but also serve in a number of our parishes here in the diocese. We're very, very fortunate to have the CMI fathers here. And so I welcome you very warmly. Thank you for visiting with us, Father Davis. We're all familiar with these parables of seeds and images that the Lord uses in terms of the harvesting, the planting, and the harvesting of seeds, and how the kingdom of heaven can be likened to the planting and the harvest of a seed in various different ways. We're in a section of the Gospel of Matthew that takes us to the seeds. And in some ways, the parables are strong, not only where they're similar, but especially where they're not similar. Take, for example, the sower and the seed. The sower plants the seed out in various different places, right? We're all familiar with that, that parable. The sower plants the seed, and some of the seed lands on um, good ground, but some of it lands on the rocky ground, some in the thorns, some in, um, in, in, on shallow ground. We're all familiar with it because we all know the obstacles. We know what gets in the way, right? And that's good. We need to be able to contemplate that once in a while. We know the obstacles. However, however, there's another reality. Some seed does fall on good ground, and that seed yields fruit. You know, the farmers in the crowd, imagine the farmers in the crowd that day as they heard this parable and hearing how the sower went out, just casting the seed in all these odd places. The farmers would say, what's wrong with that guy? Seed is expensive. What are you throwing it in among the thorns for in the first place? Why are you letting it fall on the shallow, shallow ground? What are you doing throwing it into the rocks? You should know better. You're wasting all that time. You're wasting the seed. You're wasting money. They'd scratch their heads and they'd say, gee, it's a wonder that anything would grow given all these obstacles. And yet, we hear 
that some fell on rich soil, produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. You see, the amazing thing in this parable is that anything grows given all these obstacles. That's the message. It's amazing that anything grows. And here it is with God. God spreads his word out, just like he sends the rain on the good and the bad, the just and the unjust. God spreads his word generously, recklessly, you might even say. And there were all these obstacles. We know them too well. We know the obstacles in the world to the proclamation of the gospel. We know the obstacles in our own society to the proclamation of the gospel. We know the obstacles in our own hearts to the landing of that seed. And yet God finds that good soil. God passes that seed out generously, recklessly, because God knows he'll get to that good soil and he will produce something life-giving. And that's what he does for you and for me. And that's what God does through his church. And so it's easy enough to focus in on, on the obstacles and kind of shake our heads or walk with our heads down and saying, oh, it's overwhelming. Maybe overwhelming for us, but never for God. Think about it. Jesus, we speak of Jesus as the Logos. Jesus is the Word. And what did God do? God became human. God sent his Son. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And Jesus, the Word of God, went into places that may have been expected. But more often than not, he went into places that were unexpected. He reached out to those who were in sin. He reached out to those who were suffering, those who counted for nothing in the world. He reached out to those who um, were curious, who wanted to know more about God, those who were searching for meaning in their lives. Hey, he reached out to the Pharisees and the scribes. He didn't not go anywhere. Pardon the double negative. He didn't not go anywhere. Jesus went far and wide. The, the word, the seed, was spread in all kinds of soil and continues so to be. This has to give us great hope. God is doing amazing things. I often say this. I say it at confirmation when I reflect on some th works with vocations. God is doing amazing things right here in Brooklyn and Queens. And the faith of God's people is very much alive. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not wearing rose-colored glasses. I know the obstacles. I know them all too well. And man, boy, oh boy, do we have our challenges. But you know what? God will prevail. And God will continue to do amazing things. Just as the water comes down, the rain comes upon the earth, achieves its purpose and returns to the heavens. So God's word continues to fall among us. And God entrusts you and me with getting that word out there. Don't be discouraged. Let God do what God will do with the thing, little efforts that we make. Indeed, St. Paul says, all creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. Oh, indeed, the world is waiting, and God is reaching out. And so we place ourselves into God's hands. We say, Lord, do with me what you will. Find that, Lord, find within me that, that patch of good ground, and let your word take its root in my life. And then let me join you in this work of spreading your word, planting your seeds, Seeds of life, of goodness, of eternal life, right here in the world of 2023.
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Isaiah wrote that God sends the rain and the snow down from the heavens to make the earth a place to grow and thrive. In that spirit, let us ask God to provide for our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers so that we too may grow and thrive. That we may sow God's word as generously as the sower in Jesus' parable and nature it so that it may produce fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations of the world may readily share the bounty of the earth so that none of God's children go hungry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who work so hard to produce the food we eat, from farms and ranch laborers to those who package and transport our food, that their work may be successful and they may be able to provide for their own families as well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people in those areas of our nation or of the world who are suffering from droughts or flooding, and for those whose water is contaminated and unsafe to drink, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for more vocation to the priesthood and religious life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And remembering Leonor Sastre and Leonidas Ramirez, we turn to the Lord with grateful hearts, asking that he hear our prayers and show us his ways through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through who christ our lord and so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome, Father Davis. The co-cathedral is not always this exciting on a Sunday morning, uh, floods and fire alarms, but uh, we are grateful for your presence here with us today. I know Bishop already introduced you earlier, uh, and it's grateful, grateful to have you. Uh, the a few parish announcements, if you're interested in registering your child for religious education, uh, we're also looking for a more altar servers in our parish, or if you're interested in completing an adult sacrament, uh, if you're in need of the, the uh, sacraments of initiation, please uh, register on our parish website or you can call the parish office for more information. We're really grateful uh, to the, our youth minister, Fernando Torres, who has taken uh, seven teenagers with him uh, on retreat this past week uh, to a, a camp, a young life camp upstate New York. Uh, the teenagers of our parish had a great time. They came back uh, on Friday evening uh, and they were all speaking so highly of their time on retreat at, at camp. Uh, there is an opportunity for middle schoolers to come on, on retreat at, at a summer camp from July 27th to the 31st. Because of our fundraising efforts, the price per teen has been reduced from almost $600 to $250. Uh, that is a, a, a great opportunity, $250 to send your middle schooler to a, a five-day camp uh, f f with food, with transportation, uh, and all the rest. So I think, and, and prayer, obviously, to grow in, this, in the holiness, to grow in their love of God. So if you would like more information, you can see me after Mass. And finally, uh, coming up in, uh, in August, on Sunday, August 13th, at 11 a.m. Mass, we invite the Knights of Columbus to be present uh, for a Mass in honor of M Michael McGivney, the founder of the Knights of Columbus. The relic of Michael McGivney will be present present at Mass and will be allowed, uh, will be, uh, there'll be an opportunity to venerate that relic as well. Uh, and so uh, you're all welcome and invited to come. Thank you again, Bishop, for your presence here. Thanks for uh, <laughs> dealing with the fire department this morning. In my absence, I was celebrating Mass at St. Teresa of Avila. So he's a, a, a great all-around uh, bishop and administrator and fire department and uh, plumber, electrician, all the rest. So we thank you, Bishop, for, <laughs> for your help this morning. Uh, I hope that we uh, will resolve all of these issues in the coming hour. Please, God, you may stand for the final blessing. I'm always a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things we learn by practical experience, isn't it? <laughs> the Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. And May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go forth. Thanks be to God. Angel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.